Hello everyone. Well, no one's here yet, just me. <laughs> oh, we'll wait for some people to check in while we get things started here. Um, watching the weather outside my window. Uh, we're having wandering thunderstorms. That means there's they have no idea where they're going. They're just wandering around. Uh, you know, I think that's how most of the weather seems to be these days. And let's see. Evelyn, good evening from Texas. And Lee, let's see. Oh, let's see if that comes in. Ah. Hopefully we'll have some people show up today. Uh, Joe Rita, hello. Oh, I knew you were going to come. You've been, ex you work, you do a lot with your carving lines. So maybe you'll pick up some tips in here. Sandy from California. Hi, Kathy. How are you? I'm going to see you in September, I think, in Chicago. Rachel's checking in. Ah, it's Monday afternoon. Yay. You survived the Monday. <laughs> oh, my. Ah, Donna from Texas. Excited. Yes, yes. Whenever, you know, uh, quick story before everyone already checks in. Before I started working with my Mind Brilliant software, I would say for a good 10 to 12 years, I would consistently say, um, I, I do not like digitizing. I'd rather edit existing designs than create my own. And Stitch Artist came along and I've had to eat my words because, yes, this is very exciting. Uh, it's just such easy and fun software to use, to play with. I feel like I'm playing in my software. In fact, I was playing before and I had to close all my windows down because I got lost because I had to do this the um, uh, uh, Facebook Live. Uh, Leanne, I see you're checking in from Melbourne. Oh, it's cold where you are, huh? And I saw a couple of people are sliding through real fast. <laughs> no, I don't get to catch all the uh, live comments. But we have Donna and Lori and Evelyn. Ah, oh, this is your Evelyn's my first her first chance of catching me live. Well, we try and we try and do this, but luckily the replays are available, and I am uploading them to the YouTube channel, so you'll get them there as well. Frida from North Carolina, Central Illinois. Hi, Nancy. Pat from Danbury. You know, I'm from Bristol originally. So I'm heading to visit family in a couple weeks. Uh, Diane, Bristol, Connecticut. <laughs> Live in Colorado now, but I'm originally from Bristol, Connecticut. Uh, Diane, I'm not going to pronounce... We're not going to go there. I had a I had a hard enough time with kissing me, Florida. We're not going with those Texas city. But um, I think that's east of Houston, if I'm not mistaken. I think you have a lake around there. I have friends that are fisher, fishermen, and for some reason, they were always going through that that town. Uh, Christine from very hot Illinois. Uh, Katrina's been waiting for a level three webinar. Excited. Yes, level three is, is a lot of fun. Uh, very good. Uh, most of the stuff that I, obviously, all the webinars I do can be done in level three because level three contains all of level one and level two. But there are some features of level three that are specific just to that upper level. And uh, that's what we're going to be fo focusing on today. So the main thing, and I lost, how did I lose my sample? I haven't even started yet. There we go. <laughs> today we're going to be talking about um, carving lines. And these are a part of a level three function. And I'm also going to touch a little bit on uh, the quick styles that are in Stitch Artist 3. And the reason I'm bringing them into this is because quick styles, if you've ever used a word processor like Microsoft Word and you've set up your headings and your body of text and your bullet points and different fonts so that when you select text and you choose, oh, I want this to be a heading or, oh, I want this to be a text. And then you get through with the whole thing and you're like, oh, I wish all of that body of text was not in old English. I wish I had chosen Helvetica or something. You can just change the quick style and it automatically updates it automatically. Well, that's such a time-saving feature when you're working in um, uh, digitizing because you can set up different quick styles for different things that you're working on. And once you do your first test cell, and we all know the life of a digitizer revolves around a test cell, 
um, it allows you to update the quick style so that every every object that has that quick style assigned to it is updated automatically. And that's a huge time saver, especially when you're just learning um, and you're tweaking a technique. And that doesn't mean just learning, but um, for example, this, oh, I don't have my, I did three test sews. This is my little carving. Do you see the little flower? The same one we used with the quilting from the other webinar earlier. But you see those lines that are in here, the indentations? Those are carving lines. And these, the petals are all satin stitches. So on my first test sew, I didn't compensate as well as I should have for the overlap. So my pull compensation was a little off. So because I had signed, assigned all the petals to be set in column in a certain type and I made all the settings, all I had to do was adjust the pull compensation on that quick style and boom, they all changed. And then I could go and just run it a test sew again. So, um, uh, Ev let's see, Eric's checking in and Kathy can't stay, but you'll check, you'll check it tomorrow. I'm still here. It's not getting deleted. And... Oh, sorry. <laughs> I got, I got, wow, that was funny. And I haven't even started or started my drinking yet. Jeez. Um, from the Castle Rock Police Department, Lenora is checking in. Hmm. <laughs> oh, Lenora, I'm going to see you this week. We're going to be doing our classes in Denver. And I noticed your... Um, <laughs> she's not sure why it says police department. Well, you now put me on my toes. Am I allowed to drink and digitize? Because I have my beer. <laughs> so, <laughs> it just got me silly. Uh, okay, I need a special license for that. Anyway, we're going to be talking about carving lines and uh, quick styles today. So let me switch us over to the software. And get back on track over here. Um, let's see. How do we do that? Let's go back over to this one here. Ha, ha, ha. And Lenore, you're not in jail. Well, that's good. I'm glad you're checking in from the police department, but not from the jail. Okay. This is the sample that I have of, of the flower that has the carving lines in it. And as you can see on your screen here, this is... Let me go and expand my object and we'll just look at one of these petals. No, that's the fill in the background. Here's one of the column stitches. And we'll zoom in and look at that. If you notice, this column stitch actually has a satin fill. But because of those carving lines that I've added into it, basically those lines tell the software to put needle downs, to put like a dimple into that area so that you can break up a shape without individually drawing um, shapes to create this same thing. So this outer shape is actually composed of an outer shape and then three separate lines that are inside. So let me go to a new design page over here and let's just show this really quickly. So I'm just going to go and da -da -da draw with my expert digitize uh, drawing tools as we know here da, da, control to end let's go and maybe kind of reshape this see eventually blobs are, are are okay let's see we can move that one down like this this one gets pulled in like this sort of da, da, da. trust me this is how i drew my flower in the first place isn't it lovely? This is why I don't teach drawing skills on here. Look at that. There's a great video on the Embrilliance YouTube channel on the Stitch Artist playlist that talks about how to draw with points. And we should all do this in practice. So this was my petal. And when I set this to be a satin column here, and let's change this to be a different color. So that looks more like a pink. But you can already see where the problem is going to be with this, correct? Yeah, that's too dark. There we go. You can already see that this, first of all, is a satin column. I need to add my angles of inclination, but you can already tell that the satin is not going to be able to fill this. So either I have to um, change this to a fill stitch or put a pattern in or do something because the length of this satin stitch right here, let me grab my measuring tool 
which is up here at the top. From this point, that's the whitest satin. And I can't see my screen. That's, hold on, I got this silly little thing over here. Maybe you guys could see it, but I couldn't. Bum -ba -dum -ba -dum. My lower right corner, lower left corner. That's a 32 millimeter satin stitch. That ain't stitching, we all know that. So this, this would be really silly to have this as a satin column. Uh, silly, silly, silly. However, I can add what we call carving lines to this. And a carving line, that, not, that will break up this satin. So that puts needle downs in it. To add a carving line, first of all, you have to be in create mode. And I'm gonna use my draw with points here. So I'm just gonna, and we've already seen how great I draw, but I'm gonna go left click, left click, left click. That does one nice little parenthesis. And I'm gonna right click to end. Now, when you look at your object pane here, you have your column stitch and you have your line. So they're separate. But if I take both of them at this and select them both at the same time, I go into my object, my display pane here and right click. There's an option that says combine with carve. That puts them just like when you do combine with hole and it makes one object that has a hole in it. So it looks differently. Our object now is only one object in our display pane. But if you notice, we have this carving line in it that is telling the software, hey, put needlepoint downs going all the way through here. Hopefully, isn't that cool? That's one way to break up something, to give something dimension. So if I wanna add more than one, all I have to do is draw with points again, right click to end, select both of them, right click, combine with carve, and you have to regenerate it. So I always go in and, and I readjust because my drawing is stinky anyway. And that's how you add carving lines to any object. Basically what the software is doing, when you run this sew simulator and you watch this, it's gonna put it in the underlay that it's supposed to. And when it starts filling in the top stitch, it uses the properties of the fill top stitch. But every time it hits that carving line, it puts the needle down. So this can be used to create dimension without using like motif fills or breaking up an object into more than one place. For example, watch this. I'm gonna use my little circle tool here. I'm gonna click hold and draw a circle. And if I make it a fill stitch, we have a fill. Let me turn it into artwork again. I'm gonna grab the spiral in here. And I'm going to click, hold, and drag. Oh, did I make a spiral? I've got this circle. Why is that doing that? The spiral. Click. Oh, look at that. And I'm going to select both of these objects. I'm going to right click on them, combine with carve, make it into a fill stitch. You see that? So you can put a pattern in your in your filled area without I, I I don't even know how you would digitize this without being able to add carving lines. I'm sure there's a way, but this is just very cool because it's almost like adding a big embossing because we do have embossed fills in level two. So if I create my just create a circle, I can create my shape. I can make it a fill stitch, go over to embossing, and I can add a pattern. Let's put little circles. This is not going to make the same thing, but I can make an embossed fill. That's an, a, a generated fill. But this guy here, this allows me to really create some neat things. Now, you'll notice that the because your fill is going in this is set to zero so as soon as you change your angle it's going to change what your design looks like and of course we have our artifacts we move that from one side to the other whoop bleh. move our so that we don't have an artifact in the middle of our screen but there's always going to be a certain spot that's kind of dead because your carving line is going around you know, see the carving line is, is straight across that. So there's not really a place to carve even based on that angle of stitches. And that's the law. There, There's going to be at least one spot. So you hate it, <laughs> you know, but 
think about this. Think about what the what you can do. I'm I mean, I was playing around today and I was thinking, wow, what if I drew a, like a rectangle and I wanted this to look almost like ribbon? Okay? Um watch I have my rectangle. I'm, I'm tired of pink, so we'll change that color in a minute. And I'm going to use my control key as I click, and I'm going to make a... Notice that my carving line isn't all the way inside. Right click to end. I can take these two, right click, combine with carve, make a fill stitch. Oh, look at that. Maybe I wanted to have one more. How do I do that one? This one, 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 this one. Right click. Select these. Combine with car. Boom. Whoops. I need to regenerate. Fill, fill. Boom. Think of the textures you can create on your things by adding carving lines and they work with both um satins and fill stitches and and every you can carve if you got stitches on your screen you can carve them and it just adds an extra dimension for you to to play and these are editable so it, like, first of all i said i was going to change this color that pink's kind of getting on my nerves how about a green a lighter green i want you guys to be able to see this Okay, so we have this here. These are editable. So if I want, just like on your hole, you can move these around to create, to make them more even, to play around with them, get them going as they're supposed to be going. Um, uh, mm, the sky is the limit. Sky is the limit. Okay, I don't have any questions. Oh, hi, Michelle, you're checking in from Colorado again. Did you get the wandering thunderstorms in your area? <laughs> we had this huge storm come through, then we had a double rainbow and, and now it's sunshine again. So we have we have crazy, crazy things going on today. I bet you guys can think of a lot of applications for these carving lines. You just, no one's commenting <laughs> yet, but I'm I'm thinking um, you're you're seeing the possibilities without, without sharing them with me. But this is a lot. Can you carve a name in it? Okay, why not? You, but you have to be able to draw your name. Okay, so that's that's usually the hard, hard part is drawing fit. Yeah, whatever you can, you can put, you can do. So I'm gonna have to make a bigger square. So that's basically would be my fill stitch. Boom, let's see. Select these two, boom, right click, combine with carve, make it a fill stitch. Oh, there's an L. I mean, it's it's an ugly L, but it's an L. <laughs> and you can just add the rest of it. So yes, you can actually sign your name in a background. Almost if you have like if you're digitizing um, oh, Joe Reed, I was just thinking of the photograph that you're doing. If it was a watercolor painting and say you had a lake and you wanted to sign your artist's name on the bottom of it, mm, there you go. Put your name in the fill. Um, you can do, I did a, a scripty things, but if you wanted to, um, oh, you can probably bring in a true type font. Let's see if we can, we can do that. Why not? Uh, sorry, got a slow computer here. I'm not going to do a funky one. We're going to just do a same, uh, regular there's one. It's I S A. Okay. Boom. This is going to be complicated because of that A. Ugh. I didn't grab it correctly because there's a hole in the A. So I'm not sure what this is going to do. Uh, why is might as well bust the program here on on while we're doing this, right? Let me get rid of, let me select this one and these. I'm going to go, whoops. Right click to, whoopsie, I have to have all, oh, they, okay. 
while I, I'm doing this ahead of time, but do you see that I have two designs? And remember, if you saw my previous videos, when you want to put a hole in something, they have to be out. Uh, the objects have to be in the same design. So I'm trying, I can't, when I right click on this and I go to get my little pop-up menu, these aren't in the same design. So there's no option that says combine with, with carve. So that's not, not going to work. So let's see. Um, let me make this a lot less complicated. We're going to do one letter at a time. Let's just do the S delete. It's going to have to process something. So I'm doing the A only. Now we'll do the S. Boom. I'm going to take uh, these two designs have to be combined. So I'm going to have to select both of them. I'm going to go to create menu, design, combine designs so that this little letter from the S is in the whole design. Now, when I go and I select this one and this one and I right click and I do combine with carve, boom. And now if I do a fill stitch, oops, there it is. Oops. Why is it not showing on your screen? There you go. I'm processing a little bit too much, but I would, you know, you gotta have save your work. I haven't even saved mine yet. So my, I can hear my computer fans going. It's getting a, a little crazy here, but you can see that it did put the, the carving in there with a name, but the coolest part about doing this, I mean, adding names and letters, that's, that's one aspect, but being able to add texture and dimension to objects so that your digitized items are, wow, this is really a lag between my system here. Um, adding these, that's the big, big deal about carving lines. So, uh, Kathy, why know about embossing? Um, it, embossing is just a mouse click. So you create your shape, boom, click, hold, drag, put a fill, whoops, fill stitch in it. Go over to your fill stitch properties, click on emboss, add an embossing and boom, done. I mean, it's just like a motif, except it's with the emboss. So it's no difference when, when you show motifs, it's the same thing as adding the boss. Uh, but I got to start closing these things down because my poor, um, poor computer is getting overwhelmed. <laughs> okay, so let me go and click a new design page. And I'm going to go and let's go back over to this guy here. When I was talking about the style sheets, <clears throat> and this again is a level three function. When I am digitizing something, for example, I have my fill stitches here. I have my run stitches and I have my satin columns. When you have, when you're in a create mode, it, 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 it. this far button, and this is on, in level one and two, you have this quick style button, but the only quick style you have is listed as normal. And that's using the normal is a way to set it back to the defaults of what, what you currently have. So if you happen to be mucking up your, your design, you're like, oh my gosh, what were the settings to begin with? I don't know what they are. If you click on normal, it will go back to whatever the normal settings were, were back again. So <clears throat> how did I create this quick style for this sign? Let me go in over to my new area. I'm just going to go and, oh, well, draw with points again because I am just so darn good at it. This one went out. This one went here. This one's down here. So you guys shouldn't feel bad about your drawing skills because I'm drawing a live broadcast making really ugly shapes here that eventually look pretty good when you're done with them, but oh, big lag. This doesn't, it shouldn't happen on, on a regular computer. Okay, so boom. <laughs> Jorita is telling me I have to stop showing her this new stuff. I know she comes back on and she's doing new things to her designs all the time. Ah, that's my, that's my job. All right, so I have this set to be my um, satin column. And let's put some angles of inclination in here just so that it happens. Go. So it looks kind of normal. Boom. Right click. I'm going to go and put my carving lines in real fast. Right click to end. Draw another one. Do it on this side. Boom. Boom. 
boom, right click to end. I'm gonna select all three of these, right click, combine with carve, and just to make sure that they generate themselves, I now have a first run at my satin. So when I select this, I'm going to go to my style sheet area. Now I already have one set up for satins, freestyle satins. These are ones I've already created. So to create a new one, if I have these settings that I want to keep and I want to use these for every other satin thing that I create, I'm going to click on add. I'm going to change my style name and I'm going to call this satin and we're going to call it F FB live so that I know that I can get rid of this one afterwards. What this does is it takes all the settings that are listed in your satin properties underneath your underlay properties and underneath your ties and it assigns that to this style. So if I want to change my underlay, say to be a density of, I don't know, 26 and my inset is going to be a little higher. So I'm going to make it eight points in and I want it to be edge run and parallel and I want it the fill to be density. We'll just keep these all the same. Do you notice I changed those all to normal, um, to my normal setting. I didn't actually assign it to my satin Facebook live setting. <laughs> so here I am in, I'm in my satin Facebook live. When I go to my options here, you'll, let's see, I have it. I have to, bleh. we're back here. It's assigned to my satin Facebook live. I'm going to go back to my underlay and I'm going to change this back to the higher number, change my inset to a higher number. My density, I'm keeping that the same. Go here. Do you see how my satin now has an asterisk next to it? That means that I have to, I made changes since I created my style. So if I click on update, it says I'm going to update everything on the page, any other objects that have that quick style. So I only have one object, so I'm going to click yes, because that's what it is. Now, say I draw something else. Left click, left click, left click, left click. Lovely blob here. Boom. Control, boom. I'm going to make this a uh, satin column as well. I'm going to add my angles of inclination here so that it doesn't go icky. Right click to end. And I'm going to go over to my quick style and it autumn because it remembers that I had the Facebook live. It remembers that that's my quick style that's assigned to it. Now let's say I go into this and I want to change the density to be a higher number for whatever reason. You see how it goes? I just made it larger. When I go over to my quick style, it says Facebook Live. If I choose to update it, it says, do you want to update all of them? And I'm going to choose yes. And watch what happened to this other guy here. So just imagine, like when I have this guy here, this other page, and I go to my satin properties, and I change the density of this one to a high number. And I go over to my this option here where it has my quick style set in and I choose update. And I say yes. All those other ones updated. So when I did my test cell and I said, oh, I needed to change my compensation on something. First of all, let me go and put this back. So we're going to put this back at four. I'm going to go back here and I'm going to say update. So it puts them all back. Yes. Update them all. All right. Going back to my satin properties, this little button here says adjust the compensation. So now when I choose this, if I choose to increase my compensation and make it a little bit bigger. So I have, I've already changed it. So that's what it's, it's set to four points. But if I change it to something else, like say five or six points, because it does that again, I go to my update here and now everything that has the quick style satin is going to be updated. So I don't have to go through and adjust everything manually. So that's really a key point on why quick styles are pretty darn awesome. This running stitch here is a, I have it as a bean stitch underlay. Okay. Bean stitch. This is like a, um, um, an outline. 
of this section here. It's set to a quick style of a quick style beam. So if I were to adjust this to be a longer stitch length or something else, um, a different style, everything that's assigned to that will ha will be updated. My other ones that I have listed here, these little other running stitches. This is set to a travel stitch. My travel stitch has a, a stitch length and only a single run. So I've gone through and created a quick style for various things that I use so that next time I draw something and I wanna use a quick style of run or a quick style of a bean stitch, all I have to do is I don't have to change all the properties manually. I just choose the quick style. And Helen, if your screen is out of focus, that may be because of internet connections. We have quite a few people that are watching this. Um, I think there's 32 right now and uh, internet connections, but it is being recorded that high, high definition. So maybe if you log in and watch the replay, it will be less fuzzy. Um, so, okay. So, oh, you're, you, I have to stop showing you this new stuff. You don't want to move from your computer right now. Pam, <laughs> Pam, that's incredible. Yes. Um, this is just one of those really cool time-saving features that when you have started digitizing and you're finding out, oh, I wish I could, I don't have to work so hard because you know what it is that you really want to doing, level three offers you that. So any other questions coming through or did I put you all to sleep already? <laughs> um, uh, I know some people are going to come through. Oh, someone's sad. Oh, someone went, wow, I guess. I don't know. I, I get, there's a slow internet connection because normally I see thumbs up or hearts or something coming through and it's not coming through. I'm kind of talking to myself right here. <laughs> you still need a book. Well, Pam, you can go download the PDF and um, print out the manual, uh, a book, uh, uh, you know, I, I have too many things to do in my day to write a book. A lot of this stuff has to do with playing with your software and, um, and learning it. Oh, there comes some thumbs up. So people are catching it here. <laughs> um, at least I get some interaction, interaction going on. Anyway, um, let's see. I'm wondering if there was any other questions coming through. If not, I'm going to go make some dinner. <laughs> oh, we'll just wait a few minutes. Now, maybe a few minutes. You just get to watch me talk. Um, stitch artist for dummies. Well, you know, the, the hard part about writing a book for this is, first of all, focusing on a level. And it has to end. And a lot of the, you know, it's not for me. <laughs> I, I can't do it. I'm, you know, something has to go. It's like, I, I, only, I can only do so many things in my day, guys. Um, there, there's other people that, that are good at writing books. I just can't, uh, not at this moment. I have one started that I just started on essentials, uh, five years ago. It's still not done because I, I get, uh, uh, sidetracked. <laughs> now Michelle thinks she needs to chart is three. <laughs> yeah. I mean, once you, um, uh, once you start working on in the software and find out the cool tools, eh, it's really kind of nifty and level stitch artist three. There are so many, uh, tips and tricks and, uh, shortcut features for those that are into digitizing. Absolutely fabulous. Um, angles of inclination, Nancy, that's the angles of inclination. That is when you have a satin column, whoops, that's the, um, that's, maybe that's a fill stitch. So a fill has one angle of inclination. That's how a fill stitch works. But when you have a satin column, you have multiple columns of inclination because you're directing how the stitches are going to turn around that angle. But it's mostly evident when you start working with like true type fonts or swirl designs because you want that satin to turn as you're going along. Um, uh, yes, Eric, I know you, you're loving your stitch artist three. <laughs> you're busy too. So, um, uh, Eric's been digitizing fonts like mad. So, uh, he's been using lots of angles of inclination. <laughs> uh, let's see. Well, you guys need to start, um, 
playing in your shop floor and pushing buttons. I love it when people start posting the stuff that they're they're making in their software, especially after I see, after I do one of these live videos and it makes me feel like, uh, oh, I taught somebody something. <laughs> because I am a teacher at heart. That is what I like to do. I like to show people how to do something. So on that note, on that note, uh, watch the, there's two places. Well, I'm doing live videos or I have done live videos this past week on the Brilliance page because Brian's on vacation. So if you've missed those live videos, you can go back and watch them. So you have to go to the Brilliance, uh, facebook.com slash Brilliance. So you should always like and follow that page and you'll see they do po we do posts and stuff like that. And I did two of them last week on, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, well, they were essential. So I did circular text and I did stitch artists adding stippling to a design. So tomorrow I think I'm going to do, uh, I'll give you guys a, a, well, I can't show you the picture because I didn't stitch it out well, but I'm going to be using enthusiast and showing how to create some, something cool with enthusiast and they'll be on the brilliance Facebook page as I hijack that tomorrow. Um, but once a week I come on here and do a nice little live video, give you a snip, snippet of information on one of the Brilliance programs and let you play and, and have fun and have some fun. And it's a little more casual. I know I've gotten a couple people saying that it takes too long. <laughs> well, sorry. That's what the videos are for. Book, play buttons, make your, do this at your own time. So it's just another opportunity to learn the software. On the Brilliance YouTube channel, they have all the videos that go through all of the controls for Stitch Artist, Enthusiast, Essentials. They teach you how the tools work. Once you know how the tools work, it's up to you to be creative and, and play with them and figure out, oh, what it is that I need to do with that. So um, those are short and sweet to a certain extent, or they're more detailed for different uh, applications. But this is... Um, here for this is casual. This is just me chatting about what I'd love to do. Okay. Laurie asks if you update, say pull compensation in quick styles, does it only apply to the open files? Yes. It only opens to the ones that you have the same that you're working on right here. Um, in fact, and this, this would be having to do something else, but you, when you, if you have level three under your create menu, you also have the opportunity to load your style sheets and that you can load your, all the quick styles are always loaded with the, um, if you have the basic, um, if you haven't changed it at all. So your style sheets will set your preferences for your workspace when you're opening, but the only ones it will modify for are the, your design page that you're working on. Now, if you'll notice, I went and closed tabs. You don't want to have 15 designs open here at the same time when you're working on them. That's not a good idea. Um, it's, you should always close, save often. I haven't, this, this design's been played with, but I'm not going to save it because I don't need it. But as long as you save your work often, you won't lose anything. So make sure, save often, close the extra tabs at the top so you don't get confused, you know what you're working on, and um, go from there. Your quick styles are also saved in the BE working file. So say you open up this BE working file next year, all those quick styles are still going to be attached to it. So because they're, they're part of the BE file. Anyway, hopefully that was helpful, useful to you guys. Uh, I'm going to take a head on out now. I have to cook dinner and um, get ready for my classes this week. I am going to go be in a Denver on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I think. <laughs> I think that's when the classes are. Uh, we're doing three days of hands-on classes. I still have spots available in the Chicago class for this year. So we have three going on in Chicago. We are over half full for day one. So you, day one always fills up, always. So if you're thinking about signing up for Chicago, make sure you sign up for, you know, relatively soon. I understand it's still a month and a two months out, but um, if it sells out, I it sells out. So that's the way it is. Um, day three for Stitch Artist, I always uh, have, that is always a smaller class because 
first of all, it's, it's all stitch artists. We don't do it, cover anything of the other programs. We digitize a design from start to finish. And it's usually, we start in level two. We work in level two and I will go over some of the quick things on level three that we go through, but it's basically focused on level two because we open an SVG file and we don't have to draw. Um, hardest part about teaching a hands-on class with digitizing is we're not all artists. I'm not an artist. We've already proven that a few times tonight that I can't draw. And, but I have no problem editing, but we don't want to waste our time fiddling drawing. So one of the main things we do, the reason that we teach a hands-on class starting with level two is because we can bring in an SVG or something that has already been drawn for us and we can focus on the stitches, on the digitizing, on the pull compensation, on the outlines and stitch order and starts and stops and everything that goes along with digitizing. You don't have to focus on drawing a shape and getting upset because like um you'll see there's a couple there's a lot of conversations going on in the stitch artist digitizing fans group if you're not a member of that and you want to learn how to digitize with stitch artists you need to join the stitch artist digitizing fans group because one of the conversations we talk about and it comes up on a regular basis is drawing with points nodes and um how to create your shapes and as you you saw it's I was editing all of my shapes. I was, I will, you will never, ever, not once ever. And I see I get sidetracked because I just love this stuff. You will never, ever, ever see me draw a perfect shape on the first time. I will never not do this. Okay. This creates a great first time shape. It does. It looks perfect right away. But if you want to edit this later, you'll be saying lots of four letter words because you'll, it's a never ending job. Okay. There's too many nodes in that shape. So you just got to let it go. Draw your blobs, watch the video on how to draw with points. I think it's the second or third video on the Stitch Artist playlist, how to draw with points, the difference between a curve, a cusp and a straight point and edit draw blobs and edit them so that they look nice because yeah, this looks great, but this, if you wanted to reshape this and say you wanted to make this go straight across, you've got to get either get rid of these points or try to move them or each individual one. And it's, just, that's just hard, hard. <laughs> and we're, we're all about doing stuff easy. So that had nothing to do with carving lines or, um, Quick styles, it's just a tip to be comfortable drawing your blobs and um, editing them afterwards. All right. I said goodbye before. I'm going to say goodbye again. Hopefully you guys had fun. Thanks for spending some time with me today. Um, I will see you possibly next week. I haven't figured, I should. Monday night next week. I haven't decided what I'm doing yet, but I will put the notice here on my uh, page just like you got for this one with a reminder. If you choose the get reminder, it tells you how many, how soon it's going to show up. So you get a little, if you ever go back and visit, it says, Oh, she'll be here in 98 hours <laughs> or whatever the time frame is. I can only do it a week at a time in advance. Um, but then it shows up and then you also in your timeline, your newsfeed, and you can get it afterwards. If any of you are looking to get the software afterwards, I'm going to put this here, uh, www.so whoops, dash bubbles.com F B L I V E. Boom. This link that I just posted to the comments, this has my affiliate link because, um, I do make a commission if you purchase through my affiliate link and it also has a discount code li a linked with it. So take advantage if you're interested and until next time, have fun and we'll chat with you soon. I'll see you guys online.